Thank you, Peter. And thank you, everyone, for having me as part of Prisma Day. It's really nice to be able to connect with the Prisma community and uh, be part of this awesome speaker lineup. Uh, I've actually uh, really enjoyed the previous talks because I think they are a great example of you know, some next generation web development. And we're actually going to take a, a quick break from the live coding. And I'd, I'd like for you to close your eyes uh, and actually travel back in time with me to when I first learned to build websites. Um, so think 2001, 18 years ago. Uh, little Thor was just nine years old. And uh, Wikipedia had just been released in January of 2001. So my father at that time was working at SAP. You might know it, a big German software company. And he had read this story about a German chef who had become a millionaire by building a website. And so he thought, OK, the boy is nine years old now. Might as well put him to work. And he signed me up for an HTML summer camp at SAP. That's actually a thing. It's still happening. And um, where, where they taught the empo employees' kids to build websites on the LAMP stack. Does anyone remember the LAMP stack? Yes, so Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Those were the days, huh? OK, back, enough nostalgia, back to the present day. Uh, and you can actually open your eyes again, if you actually even close them. So my name is Thor. I'm an integration engineer at Stripe, working with many of our larger customers and partners across Europe. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I see a lot of different technology stacks. And I can tell you, Perl is still a thing. Yes. <laughs> so the answer to what does a modern web stack look like is you know, quite subjective. Actually, I'd love for you to take a quick guess. What do you think is the most popular server-side language for Stripe merchants? Simply shout out what you think. Oh, yeah, OK, there was a lot of PHP there. How do you know that stuff? So um, yes, by actually, by a big margin, uh, there's a lot of PHP still being used. Of course, take into consideration, those numbers are a bit skewed, because a lot of the open source e-commerce platform ecosystem is built in PHP. Think of WordPress, WooCommerce, Magento, PrestaShop, Shopware, what have you. It's all PHP. At the same time, you all know the web has drastically changed. React has pretty much taken over the front-end world. There's a new API technology. You might have heard of it, GraphQL, sort of the hot new stuff. Um, actually, if you want to learn about how Stripe uses React and GraphQL to power our dashboard, um, my colleague Sashko is speaking at GraphQL Conf tomorrow uh, about that. Sorry, quick shameless plug there. Serverless has made it easier than ever to get up and running. I mean, Joh Johannes has told us all about that. Actually, we should have aligned our talks, you know. <laughs> and progressive web apps aim to provide reliable, fast, and engaging user experiences on the web. And we've traveled back to the future with static site generators and the Jamstack. Now, looking at that, that's quite different from the good old LAMP stack I mentioned earlier. And as different as these tech stacks are, there are a lot of common shared challenges when it comes to building an e-commerce experience. We need to securely collect personal information and payment details. We need to handle authentication. If we want to provide a one-click checkout, we need to make sure that the customer is locked in and is actually allowed to do that. We need to handle webhooks to get informed about events that didn't originate in our system. In general, we need to persist data and handle reporting. Now, at Stripe, we obsess over the developer experience by building APIs, developer tools, and documentation. But there's a big learning curve involved to even get to the point where you have a product that requires payments. That's why we're teaming up with Algolia, Prisma, Site, and hopefully many more in the future 
to create a modern e-commerce reference app, which will stay up to date as the web stack continuously evolves, to give all developers a reference implementation, not just for e-commerce, but for many different pieces that are crucial to building a modern web experience. And here to introduce the Fluid stack to you is Flavian. Can you hear me? Great. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Flavian. I'm an open source engineer at Prisma. And for the past year, I've been working uh, on Prisma 2, but most especially on GraphQL tooling. And today, I'm excited to give you a preview of the Fluid stack, a reference implementation for some of the tooling that we've built. So you might be wondering, what is the Fluid stack? And as Thor mentioned, building web apps can be challenging, especially considering the amount of technologies that are available. And so while there are tons of services out there to help you build your products, each of them creates examples based on, on their own business activity, making it often hard to connect the dots. That's why we are dedicated to unify our efforts in order to provide a reference implementation to showcase many best practices for each layer of your app. So some of the components that we are planning to include into the Fluid stack are, well, obviously Prisma for the data layer, but also GraphQL Nexus to enable end-to-end -end type safety, just like Siegfried showed us. Um, we also want on the Stripe play well, so there you go, you have Nexus and also Stripe, sorry, for PCI compliant and future proof checkouts. Um, then on the front end, we want to have Next.js for service and rendering with React and also Algolia for a blazingly fast text search experience. And finally, now for serverless hosting. Okay, okay, so um, enough with the buzzwords. Let me actually give you a quick demo of it. So. This is much very work in progress, but we still wanted to show you um, some of um, the cool feature that we made. So here's the web shop. Um, and the whole web shop is built around this concept of collections. And a collection is very simple. It's just a group of products that can be aggregated using some custom um, conditions. So here, for example, we created a collection with all the products that has the tag bag. And what's interesting about this collection is that by default, you get these very um, custom filtering based on the products that are within each collection. So here you get like the normal one, like the brands and the color, but then you get like the sizes, the materials, etc. And so you can um, use as many filters as you want. And so let's say here, for example, we want to find all the bags that are made out of leather. And so here, um, let's say, yeah, that one looks fine. And hopefully, yeah. And so now each product is made out of several options. So here the options are the color and the sizes. And what's interesting is that given what you're looking for, for example, you might want to be really interested in that bag in red. And so if you are interested in red, you want to make sure that in red, it's available in your size. But maybe you don't really care so much about the color, so you rather want to find the size and then see in which color it's available. So you can do it the other way around. And so here in purple, we see that it's only available in M and L, or that in L, it's available well in um, all the colors. So let's select two options, and I guess add it to the cart. But that's all we have for the demo right now. Um, so let's get back to the coach. Our app. So to recap, we are hoping that the Fluid stack can serve as a central place to find examples of common patterns needed across web development, built by the community for the community. Most applications encounter a common set of challenges that can be hard to get right. And we think e-commerce is a great domain to demonstrate these challenges. You can find Fluid stack as a preview on GitHub as this URL today. We'd love to hear feedback from you to know whether you think this would be useful for you and your community. And most importantly, we would love for you to get involved. Thank you very much.